Grant has two specific instances of the 6502. One of them is under multi-comp, and the other one is emulator, or it is the UK 101. And it's a different project. They're very similar. It looks like they were created probably nearly the same time. This is the revision history for multi-comp, and the dates of the files he has here, the changes, are 2014 sort of th uh, throughout the year. Grant's UK 101 project Looks like it was created earlier in 2014, January, and that may be the point at which he switched over to the multicom. Um, this is a little bit different project. It's uh, what a couple of videos are on here. I think I didn't realize at some point because they're so similar and use the same structures that they were a little bit different. The differences are that the UK 101 project itself was very faithful to the super border UK 101. Uh, memory mapping and in particular the use of dual ported RAM for the video display. Grant took the Segmon monitor ROMs and got them working with the hardware he had in the FPGA and that mapped the memory instead of using the terminal function that Grant later created or adapted, I'm not quite sure which, it used that dual port memory. So it leaves you sort of with two options if you want to uh, work with a screen. Either you can send it to the display function that's the drives VGA directly, does 80 by 25 video, or you can use the dual ported one here. And um, as I've shown, I've done some adaptations to get it to go to 64 by 32 on VGA. And either is doable. Uh, this segment and the basic that's in here is different. The other uh, multi comp version doesn't have. Segmon as and Segmon is a machine code monitor. It does have basic though, but it is the OSI basic, not this basic that's inside of the super board. So there's some differences and it's kind of up to preference. If you want something that's an authentic authentic experience, then doing the UK 101 is more authentic if you're more maybe more familiar with later Ohio scientific computers or just want something more generic that will more easily adapt to different processors, probably choosing the multi his multi-comp project is probably a slightly better choice. Here's multi-comp running. When, you're, when you turn it on, you're faced with something similar to what the OSI C1P Superboard presented. You're presented with a C or W for cold or warm start. The Sigmon monitor gave you CGWM for running the Segmon monitor. After you boot it, you'll see you get 15871 bytes of memory and a different basic version and prompt than the other. Uh, there's a little strange thing going on here with the keys. When I tr think I'm pressing the double quotes, I'm not. And uh, we'll take a look at why that's the case in a second. But after a little bit here, I'm not looking straight onto the monitor. It's set up for the camera. Um, after doing it a couple of times, I realized what was going on and uh, reverted back to, to memory from way back. Uh, let's give it another shot here again and see what I did well. I think I typed the same thing a second time. If you wait a few seconds here, I'll notice that it didn't work and then remember, oh yeah, I've got to do uh, something a little bit different. Oh, bummer. Okay, well, here, we're, let's try again with hitting the right key that works with this setup. There we go, the double quotes. That should work. And sure enough, that worked just fine. The keyboard mapping was not quite standardized back in the day. And this is the keyboard mapping for the OSI program, as well as for the C1P, OSI C1P or Superboard or UK 101. Notice that if you go next to the P normally, or two over from the L, normally you would find a uh, double quotes if you shift. Um, to get double quotes you have to do a shift two, which is an at sign on this keyboard. So it's as if those two had swapped. Um, it's kind of funky to use and takes a little while. I used on um, one of the keyboards I had to use the P-Touch label to make it work. Just a little bit of uh, something that's different, keeping a map in hand is helpful. That's why when I ran that program it had some trouble I forgot and I wasn't looking right at the screen as I was typing so hopefully that explains what was going on there. So let's do a quick review of the systems we've got working so far. We got a Superboard 2 up and running 
same as the UK 101, same as the OSI C1P. We have a version of Multicomp that we just got going that runs with the 6502. And we have a version of Multicomp running with the 6809 CPU. So, so far we've got two different CPUs going and they're all running at speed, except the Superboard has issues running faster. It looks like if you press the keyboard keys, because of the way the hardware is set up, it wants to do a repeat on the keys. For video, we've got kind of a funky video on the Superboard. It's wide, as wide as the screen, but it's fairly narrow on the screen, and it's 64 by 32. For Multicomp and for, well, both Multicomp, 6502 and 6809, We've got them both running also on the VGA at 80 columns by 25 rows. All three have at least 16K running. The Superboard has a little bit more because it uses a little less RAM, not having the terminal inside of it. And the terminal probably could be cut down to be less space. I think it supports different um, resolution fonts and things like that. Um, so it probably could be cut down by shutting off attribute bits as well. But this is just a good representative spot. We've also got USB to serial working on all three cards and the ability to switch to the out port and change baud rates. Although I don't know that I've tested that here on the Multicomp 6502 that I just got running. But there's no good reason to think it couldn't run. It's using the same functions. All three configurations are running the same PS2 keyboard for input as well. Both of the Multicomp configurations run with processor at 25 megahertz, which is a pretty nice upgrade over what we would have had back in the day. And the Superboard, uh, I ran it higher. I think it was able to run at two or four megahertz without much problem. But when I got too fast, as I said, the key, keys repeated. And I think that's just due to the implementation. Grant really built an emulator in there that presents the row and columns and fetches those. So I think with the processor running faster, it's pulling that much faster. I think I remember looking around in Sigmon and seeing there was a place to set the speed of the keyboard repeat, but that would take quite a bit of poking in the Sigmon. Um, I'm not really sure what approach I want to take here. I, Sigmon is nice for putting stuff in machine code, but equally, a little program in BASIC could poke into memory and then call a user function in, in RAM as well. So I'm not sure there's a big advantage to sticking with a C1P Superboard UK101 configuration other than maybe for historical reasons of it just being more similar to what I had back in the day in the late mid to late 70s. All four configurations can use the buttons that are on the card the same way, uh, although I think on um, maybe one or all of them that one of the buttons may be set to reset. I've done it to do a warm reboot. It's kind of nice actually to hit the warm reboot button because it keeps the program in place and it's just nice for messing around with it. All four can have support for the LEDs, although I don't think I put it in here yet for the Multicomp 6502. Uh, I think I just need to grab some pieces out of Multicomp 6809 and move them over. The LEDs are nice. One of them currently is assigned to what port is being uh, output to. If you hit the F1 key, it switches back and forth between this screen and the serial port. Uh, the other one could be assigned easily to the baud rate for when you upload programs to the card. It would be nice to be able to know that I'm in low speed mode and make sure that PuTTY is set for the same mode. But this, I think, makes good use of the resources of this card. So the things I haven't messed with yet on the card are the buzzer. Um, I played with it a little bit, but realized that when you press a button, if you were trying to make the buzzer go, it needed to have an oscillator also attached to it. And I haven't gotten around to trying it yet. Just pressing would make a small, tiny click on the speaker. It's uh, more of a speaker than a buzzer that way. The ADD, I haven't touched that yet. Uh, that could be, actually, I think that's a, a DA. Um, yeah, that's, I think that's a DA. Let's see what the card says. No, it's an ADD. Uh, I haven't touched with that yet, but that would be interesting, I suppose. I'm not sure. I'd rather have a DA than an ADD. I'd rather be able to make sound out of the card especially given the uh, lack of I.O. that's left after you do VGA on this card. The other thing that would be nice, one of the other things that would be nice to get going are the serial E squared prom. Um, maybe create a file system in there perhaps. It's got a quite large part and it would be kind of nice to be able to store and save, uh, store and load programs out of there. 
Uh, the IR interface, and it comes with an IR remote, that'd be fun to play with, but probably the most important thing as far as making this a full-fledged microcomputer would be to get the SD RAM going and then bump the RAM space up from the current 16 or 19K up to the full space. The other thing that I don't have yet, uh, haven't spent any time on, but I've got it working in previous configurations is the Z80. Uh, maybe I'll try that next because that should be low hanging fruit. If you want more information, you can see our wiki pages for these products and we have YouTube videos on them as well. We have a store in Tindy where we sell all of our cards. Thanks for watching our video and if you enjoyed it, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.